So got a question here, this is a cool one. So got a question from a mother for her 10 year old son who just lost his second match that he had. It was, like a, it was kind of like a pro style match where they had like the lights and everything else. Kind of like, you know, a fight to win type thing. And so during the match, she said that he had a guillotine choke sunk in and said that it looked like it was perfect. But for some reason, the kid didn't tap and then he eventually, you know, couldn't submit with it. He ended up losing the uh, match. Now. That said, they said it was kind of a, they were talking, I guess, afterwards, and they had heard that the guillotine is a hard submission to finish, and so they're wondering, one, if that's true, and two, if there's some transitions that they can, or some movements that they can do to increase the percentage of effectiveness with the guillotine choke. So, first off, thanks for the question. Uh, I think it was Cassie. And so let's take a look at the guillotine choke and just break it down just a little bit here. Uh, put my knees here for him, brother. All right, so what... We're not going to talk about where you got to the guillotine choke, I'm not sure, but we'll talk about the positioning. So first off, when you're doing a guillotine choke, probably you know, one of the things I see people mess up the most often with a guillotine choke is they do this. They get to a full guard position, and then they do this thing where they go straight back, and the head eventually pops right out. Super calm, okay? So understand that what you're doing first off, when I'm choking Chad with a guillotine choke, I'm not doing this, okay? Um, one of my... Um, Coaches, he likes to use the term rock the baby. So you're gonna rock that baby. Um, I even call it like bringing the thumb to the shoulder, you know, or a pirate arm, like arr. Sorry, limb joke. Um, but we're gonna grab that wrist here and we're gonna bring this here. And again, what that's doing now is if I'm here and I'm choking, this is gonna be more direct pressure on the carotids rather than me simply arching the back, which typically creates a lot of pressure on the, the, all these muscles. If you've ever had someone do a guillotine choke and they didn't have it in very well, and afterwards you just felt like your neck was stretched out, and those muscles were all extended and, and junked up afterwards, that's typically what happened. If you do a really good guillotine choke, a lot of times it's very tight. It's a very tight choke rather than a crank. Okay, so to make that happen, a couple things. We'll look at a couple different variations from the guard. So from here, one is that when you hit the ground with your guillotine choke, we want to make sure that we adjust and turn to the side. Notice that I'm no longer flat on my back. I can lock the guard and all this stuff, but again, what's going to happen now is again, we're going to rock the baby. And again, what that's going to look like from here is that we're doing this, right? Bringing that, that thumb to the shoulder. And again, you can use a ton of different grips here, but just bring that elbow down, high elbow, and then bring that thumb to the shoulder just to pitch off. Now, a lot of times for transitional purposes, and for like kind of going where I'm gonna, you know, where I have some options afterwards, I like to be in sort of a, a modified version of a half guard. So for instance, if I was to fall back, I would be working this, this leg on the inside and then working this leg on the outside. One, this allows me a little bit more angling to finish the choke, but also if for some reason if it's not working, I can easily do a butterfly sweep here and I can come up to finish. Now I can finish here by coming up to the mount or there are a ton of options where, again, let's say here, I'm going and he sweeps over. One of my favorites here is grabbing the chin with a chin strap. And then what I do is I come up to the top and I can slide basically my fist into his neck, okay? So I cut the chin, this hand's gonna slide in. So knuckles are gonna go right into place and I'm gonna grab the top of my hand and then I'll have pressure against this garage pressure against this crowd and so then from here I can switch over here and finish okay and again there's a lot of movement that's going to take place because people will jump around off of a guillotine the big thing is to make sure that if the head is on this side of my body if I have a center line right here the person never gets over to the side so as soon as his body crosses that center line right boom right there it's done you gotta let they, there's some things you could do, I'm not going to say that. There's some transitions, I don't want to get too deep in those, just some of the basic guillotine. At this point, I would say let go, okay? Or make sure that they never get past. So if he starts trying to hop around, boom, we're stopping that from happening, keeping him over here. And again, try to finish it here by getting rocking that baby, okay? If that doesn't work, if he's still hanging out here, we can butterfly sweep, we can come up to a mounted guillotine, or open your palm up. Slide the knuckles in, boom. So it'd literally be chin strap, bang, coming up, right into position, and then put the pressure on the neck. So that's the choke that I like to finish from or I like to transition with. But even if you just take those tips and work on the guillotine and making sure that you're really turning the body, it doesn't matter what position you do it from, that's always gonna be the same case. Like if you're on mount, you're still rocking the baby. If you're doing it from guard, rocking the baby. Even if you're on the feet, right? Um, everybody's probably watched a fight 
where they like like a really bad amateur mixed martial arts fight where the guy's like just does this right instead if we rock that baby it's so much tighter okay so it doesn't matter what you know position is coming from it's always going to be true center line is always going to be true keeping that person on the same side as the head and then again that little transition at the end that i did where i was coming up with that uh, sort of I guess you'd consider like some sort of modified Ezekiel. That's my preferred way to follow it up afterwards. So Cassie, hope that helps. Thanks for the question.